In this video, I'm going to cover some of the common mistakes beginners make when 3D modeling. So I'm going to start off by creating a primitive and let's just create a cylinder. Now, the mistake that I see a lot of beginners committing is that they create primitives with just way too many divisions to them. So when you're starting off and you're blocking a scene, try to go as low as you can get away with. And a good number to start off with would be eight. So for cylinders, eight divisions would be pretty good. And this mistake happens with spheres as well. So let's just move this off to the side. And this is just way too many divisions here. So you need to ensure that when you create it, you need to come to the tab over here because if you kind of move away, What's going to happen is i mean if you click away what's going to happen is that window is going to go away and you're not going to be able to control the amount of divisions that are here so just go ahead and create this uv sphere and don't click out and just change the segments to about 16 and um, the rings to about eight and that should give you something pretty reasonable so let's just move this off to the side so working with this is a lot more reasonable than what we had uh, before this so when you're blocking out your scene it's always good to have as low a poly count as possible because that way it's going to be a lot more easier to uh, control your shapes and it's also going to be really easy to correct things if you do end up making any kind of mistakes now the next thing I have observed is when you are starting to model and you're starting to actually put in some details and manipulate these uh, primitives, beginners tend to use way too many um, edge loops right off the bat. So you want to try and use as little as possible. So don't start start by just adding too many edge loops because it's going to be hard to again. Uh, control the shape and when you run into a problem and you need to make any kind of corrections it's going to be an absolute nightmare if you have to actually try to correct things and uh, from my observation and experience it's always better to just start from the top again so the other thing that i've noticed a lot of people do which is absolutely not recommended is using the subsurf modifier while they're modeling. Um, and I've seen a lot of videos on Instagram and even some on YouTube where people are, uh, they just um, add a subdivision surface modifier and they made their model smooth. And during the whole process, they just kind of manipulate this smooth mesh preview that they have here. And this is not recommended. So you kind of see things like this. And the reason you don't want to be doing this is because this is not an actual, this is not the actual representation of your model. This is simply a preview and this is not what's important. How it looks as a smooth mesh is not an accurate representation it's fine to have this um, in your modifier stack and you can toggle it on and off while you're working uh, but what's important is the uh, cage that you have here and not the smooth cage so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm just going to get rid of all this and i'm just going to create a plane and let's jump into vert mode and I'm just going to off the, offset this ever so slightly. So once I've offset this word a little bit, this plane is no longer planar, meaning it is a non-planar surface. And this is something that beginners might struggle with because, you know, starting off, they may nudge a word or two out of place uh, and therefore making the surface non-planar and this is something you need to watch out for when you are starting because this will cause problems down the line uh, because even though this is a quad uh, when you render and under the hood everything is sort of seen as triangles 
so let me just um, switch to this material preview. And let's just give this a metallic material. So now with this uh, material preview, let me show you what it might look like when you end up rendering this. So it may not be um, visible at this point. Everything may seem fine. It looks like it's planar. But let's just switch to vertex mode and let's just join these two ends. And you can see that we actually have a bit of a crease running through the center of this surface. And when you render, chances are this is going to happen because under the hood, everything is just triangles. Uh, and uh, let me just exaggerate this a little bit more so that you can actually see what's going on. So you can very clearly see that there's this crease that is running. And if you were to cut details into this, it would be a big problem. So I've gone ahead and cut a detail into the surface. You can see that since we have a non-planar surface here, there's a very light gradient that you may not be able to see. Uh, but on my screen, I can see a pretty strong gradient that is looking very, very odd. So this is one of the problems uh, you may run into. So you can see that the shading is very different across the surface, entire surface. One side is a lot more lighter and the other side is a lot more darker. And there's just this weird dark to light gradient that's going across the surface that is undesirable. And that's one of the problems when you have non-planar surfaces in your models. So when you're modeling, you need to ensure that um, you keep checking, especially uh, relevant when you're doing hard surface modeling, to check to see if your surfaces are planar. Now I'm just going to get rid of this plane here and create a new one. and let's um add the same material to this as well now i'm also going to duplicate this and let's just move this off to the side here so one of them is going to be planar and the other is going to be non-planar so i'll just select this one here and jump into vertex mode and i'll just shift this ever so slightly and you can make out from the orthographic view that this has been offset. So I'm going to cut in the same details into both of these planes so that you can see the difference between a non-planar and planar surface. So I'm just going to get the knife tool and cut into the surface. And I'll do that on the other side as well. And you can already see that in the non-planar surface, you can see the edge loop that I had cut into the surface is already creasing. But let's go ahead and continue with this. So I'll just bevel this and I'll inset it and then just raise this surface. So we can already see that we're getting some artifacts and some creasing on the non-planar surface. Now let's go ahead and repeat that with this. Now once I jump out of edit mode, you can see the difference. The planar surface is behaving in the way it should, whereas the non-planar one, you can already start to see some creases. Uh, but let's continue to um, add more details and see what happens. So now that we've cut pretty much the same details into both these surfaces, 
you will notice that we've actually got a problem with the non-planar surface. You can see that there's a bit of creasing going on. There's also a weird gradient on the surface and there are other artifacts. So the more details you start to cut into a non-planar surface, the more um, issues you're gonna find when you actually render this. So at first this might seem quite insignificant, but it actually matters a lot when it comes to hard surface modeling because at the time of render all this is going to start showing up and you're going to have some weird artifacts and creasing in places you don't want there to be creasing and so this is actually quite important and something you need to pay attention to and you need to keep checking to see whether your surfaces are planar wherever they need to be. So what if you've already gone ahead and cut details into a non-planar surface? So in order to rectify it, all you have to do is enable the snap tool and then ensure that snap to vertex is selected and then go ahead and select the verts that are out of place and then align them. So now in the orthographic view, you can see that all these verts here are not in alignment with the one at the bottom. So we're going to have to take all these and align it to the one at the bottom. So with your move tool, you can just start to align these. And you're going to have to do this for all the words that are out of place. And the more details you have, the more harder it's going to be to rectify this. It's just going to be very tedious. But that's basically the process of uh, go going about aligning everything. Now, another thing I forgot to cover uh, early on when I was talking about adding too many edge loops was I forgot to mention control loops. So when you're doing sub modeling, you're going to be adding a lot of uh, control loops. Let's just go ahead and deselect that snap. And let's do that again. So you're going to be adding a lot of control loops when you are modeling anything hard surface. But I would refrain from using control loops in the beginning of the process. Rather use the crease tool and you can basically crease whatever edges you want and you can find the if you right click you can just find the crease option so shift e is the shortcut for that and you can basically just go ahead and crease the edge that you want to harden rather than use control loops in the beginning and the reason for this is so that you can actually keep the mesh relatively light when you're modeling because when you start to add too many control loops it can make the mesh more dense than you want it when you're modeling but once you're done and you're happy with the model that you have you can then go ahead and start adding your control loops and you can uh, remove your creases so that's just something i forgot to cover early on now one last thing i want to cover is this uh, misconception that your model needs to be composed of one mesh so that's actually not true so let me go ahead and load in a model so now i've gone ahead and i've loaded this mesh so there's this misconception that a model needs to be composed of one mesh entirely of one mesh and that's not true if you look at this model that i've got here everything is made out of different pieces of geometry so the handle is different the top of this lid is different everything is separate and it's not part of one mesh so there is no need to have everything composed out of one mesh uh, you don't have to do it it's all right to have meshes intersect like you can see here so this is all totally fine so that's it for this video be sure to avoid these mistakes the next time you sit down to create a model and don't forget to like and subscribe for more I've also got a Patreon and Gumroad, so check those out if you are interested. And thanks for watching.